Well everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the M2 Mac Studio and see how this particular Mac holds up in 2024. Now, this thing literally just came out not that long ago, and this is probably one of the best types of Macs that you can probably buy. These things have a ton of capability, a ton of quality, and I will tell you, you can buy this type of Mac today and have an amazing device in front of you for so many years to come. This thing can last forever. There's very few issues that you're probably going to run into with a device like this. If I'm going to go and buy a device, why not buy something like this, right? The M2 Mac Studio, whether you get the M2 Max or the M2 Ultra, these things will last forever. And from a price tag standpoint, from everything across the board, these are very, very, almost like luxurious devices. Like if you want to get something better than a Mac Mini, but maybe not as crazy priced as something like a Mac Pro, you might as well go and get the Mac you know, Studio. These things are amazing. And for those studio professionals, that's what Apple basically sends you. But is this better or is it you know, a better deal than something like you know, the M1 Mac Studio? We'll take a look throughout that throughout this whole entire video. I will tell you, if you want to pick up this Mac or some other Macs, links will be down in the description. You can get there from there and you can help support the channel at the exact same time. Now, starting off with the outside of these particular Macs, the big thing you have to keep in mind is that this Mac Studio is a very interesting design, and I think that's kind of the best way to describe it. So it starts off at $2,000, which is a very, very you know big price to pay. It's not a cheap device by any means, and you're definitely going to be spending quite a bit of money going through and purchasing a device like this. So this is one of those things. It's not a cheap you know, Mac. It's definitely going to be taking up you know, quite a bit of price from your particular wallet, but it's one of those things you're going to have to pay for when you're going to, you know, so it kind of makes sense. Now, the big thing you have to keep in mind is that the design of this thing looks very, very good. And that's something I actually like a lot. If you're going through and getting this type of Mac, it's kind of like two Mac minis kind of stacked up on top of each other, which is actually something that I actually really, really liked a lot. And this in and of itself is a very cool thing going on for this particular Mac. Now on the front side, you're getting two USB Type-C ports, which I think look great. I love having USB Type-C. It's a very, very cool thing going on for this particular device. And like I said before, this in and of itself is a very cool thing going on with these particular devices. I love having that type of capability. But a big thing to keep in mind here with these particular Macs is that for the most part, you're going to be getting, you know, if you get a Mac mini, you can still kind of get a dongle set up to kind of emulate this, but it's nice having it right at the front. It's a, there's a very few amount of devices that have this. In fact, the Mac mini and Mac Pro don't really give you that type of capability, at least on the front side. This particular Mac gives it to you, which is something I actually like a lot. On the sides, there's not really much else going on. On the back side though, there is some interesting stuff going on here because there is a ton and a ton of ports that you can basically choose from. So basically from the port selection, you do get a few different models. So just kind of keep that in mind. So if you get the M2 Ultra model, you get four Thunderbolt 4 ports and then six Thunderbolt 4 ports on the M2 Ultra model. But you can also go and spec out a version where there's two USB-A ports for the M2 Max and M2 Ultra. But there can also be two USB-C ports on the M2 Max. So keep that in mind, depending on which particular model you get, you can get those ports. From the video that I'm displaying right now, this was the base model, the cheapest model you can buy. So keep that in mind. I did not go through and change anything out. I got the cheapest model that you can basically buy. But regardless of which model you buy, you will still get that HDMI port. You will still get that 10 gigabit ethernet port and you will still get that SD card slot. So nothing is really going to be going you know, super crazy there. You're basically going to be getting the same type of layout for the most part, which is good. But I will tell you for the average person out there, like I've stated a million times, you're really not going to notice too many big differences. Like these types of devices hold up very well from a port selection standpoint. And I still think that if you're going to go through buy a device like any of these, you're going to be getting a very good quality device, which is going to stand the test of time for a very, very long period of time, which is very cool. So from that side, you don't really have too much to kind of complain about here, at least from the port selection standpoint. Now on top of that, this kind of brings us to one of the things that I wanted to talk about was how this thing kind of compares from the exterior internally against the M1 model. And I will tell you, for the average person, meaning if you're going through and buying something like the Mac Studio, whether you're buying this one or the last version, you're not going to run into a problem where you're going to go through and feel like, oh my goodness, I wish I had the M2 model. If you have the M1 model, if you're running into a bottleneck where you're just constantly running into performance issues, you're not really going to feel that much better, in my opinion, if you switch up to something like the Max, you know, the M2, you know, M Mac Studio. You might as well switch over to a Mac Pro at that point and get a way better device. The differences between here, like if you're running into problems with the M1 Max, there's probably going to be an issue with your device no matter which one you get. The difference I'll tell you from the performance side, really, is I'll just tell you the numbers and I'll make it make sense in a second. The M1 Max model, so I'll look at the base models of both, or actually let's look at the top tier models which you can spec out with. You can get up to 20 core CPU on the older model. The newer model can go up to 24 cores. 
the older Mac Studio, 64 cores of the GPU, the newer model, 76 cores. RAM, there's a pretty big difference. You could go from 128 gigs on the Mac Studio all the way up to 192 gigabytes on the newer model, but you're still getting eight terabytes of storage on both models. So that right there is another interesting thing because there's not really like too many insane differences here from these two devices either. So that's kind of what I'm saying. Like if I'm going to go through and get either one of these phones or at least one of these you know, Macs, I'm honestly genuinely very, very happy with the performance of either one of these models. Again, to give you some perspective, on my current MacBook that I do every single thing with, I use the M1 Pro Max, you know, Mac, MacBook Pro. It's a very fast MacBook. I have a great time with it. I never run into a situation where I felt like I needed the newest MacBook or I needed anything like that. With these Mac Studios, they're so power efficient. They're so great that you're really not going to run into too many problems. And that's kind of the big thing I kind of want to reiterate time and time again. You are going to be getting a very good, powerful Mac on both these models. And that is something that's actually really good between both of these Macs. So from a performance perspective, you're really not going to notice too many big differences. If you have all the money in the world, please go for the M2 model. Just get it, move on with your life, and that's that. But if you are on a budget of even some sort, you might as well swing for the cheaper model. And that's the thing that makes the most amount of sense for me in this you know, situation as well. So from that side, and that kind of covers it up there. From the software perspective side, I mean, both it's quite obvious the Mac Studio, the newest one, is going to last longer, but the older one is still going to be lasting for a good amount of time as well. So that right there is another big thing. You're really probably not going to notice too many differences from the performance side either. And I generally feel like if you're going to go through and get a, you know, any type of device, the M1 Mac Studio is still going to be very, very long supported, but the M2 model is the one that Apple is going to be spending more time and effort in and actually supporting for the most part. So that right there is another very big thing to keep in mind as well. And to be honest, if I'm going to go through and just kind of sum up this whole entire thing, I genuinely do think a device like the M2 Mac Studio is perfect. For a lot of people out there, it's probably one of the most perfect devices you can buy. And that is something that I actually love a lot. I love being able to go and just quickly buy a MacBook and just kind of move on with my life. Like I genuinely feel like this is a very good device and I'm a very big fan of it. But I will tell you, if you can, you know, if you want to save some money, you can get the older Mac Studio and still have a very good device. Like that thing is killer. It has a ton of capability, ton of quality, and I love that particular Mac a lot. So take it as you will. If I'm going to go and pick up one, it's definitely going to be that, you know, M2 Mac Studio if I'm not on a budget. But even if I'm constrained just a little bit, I'm definitely buying something like the M1 model, you know, saving a little bit of money and going from there. So take that as you will, but that kind of covers it up there for the most part. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, till then.